What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. Today, I've got an advanced grammar lesson for you. We're going to focus on three verbs that you can use to give advice. And they are to recommend, suggest, and advise. We're going to learn how to use them correctly because they are extremely tricky. These verbs can stand you in good stead when writing, for example, a report and giving your recommendations in the final paragraph, or, for example, when writing a review about a movie or a book. Are you ready? If so, grab your notebook and let's get going. First, we're going to focus on the verbs to recommend and to suggest and look at four patterns that they follow. For starters, we're going to look at the difference between the verbs to suggest and to recommend. To recommend is more informal and it refers to a personal experience, whereas to suggest is more formal and it refers to a general idea, an option worth considering. But it doesn't mean that we've experienced something firsthand. And now let's look at four patterns. The first one, we can say to recommend or to suggest that someone should do something. After should, we have to use the base form, aka the infinitive without to. And in spoken English, we can omit that. Let's look at two examples. The first one, the doctor suggested that she should do yoga and go swimming. If you want, you can omit that, which is more common in spoken English. And we can say, the doctor suggested she should do yoga and go swimming. One more example, he recommended, I should go to nature. We don't use should if the subject is I, because it's redundant. For example, I can say, I recommend that you meditate with headspace or I recommend you meditate with headspace. And now let's move on to the second option, which is to use a direct object after the verbs to recommend and to suggest. So we can say to recommend or to suggest something. And if you want, you can also add to someone. To recommend, to suggest something to someone. Let's look at two examples. The first one, I recommend this cafe. Or I can say, I recommend this cafe to your brother or to you or to everybody. And one more example, I suggested this exam. Or the same, I can add, for example, I suggested this exam to Peter. The third alternative is to use ing after to recommend and to suggest. Two examples here. The first one, I recommend visiting Bali. And the second one with suggest, I suggest setting up a meeting. And now let's move on to the fourth and the trickiest point of all, which is to use that plus a clause in the present subjunctive mood, which means that after a subject, we have to use a base form, aka the infinitive without to. And it's applicable to all persons and tenses. That's why it's so tricky. And that is optional and can be omitted. And now let's put it into practice. The first sentence, I recommend that you watch this interesting interview. If you want, you can omit that, which is more common in spoken English. The second example and the tricky one, I recommend that he watch this interesting interview. So it's not correct to say I recommend that he watches because we have to use the base form, the bare infinitive or the infinitive without to. So I recommend he watch this interesting interview. And if we want to make the sentence negative, we have to place not after the subject. For example, I recommended 
that he not smoke. And now let's look at three examples with the verb to suggest. Number one, I suggest that you take this exam. Or without that, I suggest you take this exam. The second example, I suggested she take this exam. Even though we have the past simple, I suggested, and the third person, she, we have to use the base form, the infinitive without to. I suggested she take this exam. It's not correct to say I suggested she takes this exam or I suggested she took this exam. And one negative sentence, I suggest you not eat junk food. And guys, before we continue with this lesson, just a super quick reminder. If you like today's lesson, please don't forget to like it and to subscribe to English Bits if you find it useful. Thank you. Next month in February, I'd like to create two groups to help you prepare Cambridge exams. So if you want to take the first or CAE exams in the near future, please let me know. You can send me an email or DM me on Instagram. Thank you. And last but not least, we're going to cover the verb to advise, which is a formal verb that is often used with subjects like government, doctor, teacher, etc. And I think it's a great verb to be used in a report, for example. And here we're going to look at three patterns. The first one is different from the previous verbs. And it's to advise someone to do something. Let's look at two examples with this pattern. To advise someone to do something. For example, the doctor advised him to stop smoking. And one more example here, the government advised not to travel abroad. The second option, we can also use ing after the verb to advise. For example, the teacher advised watching this movie. And the third alternative, we can use that, which is optional, followed by a clause in the present subjunctive mood, which is the base form or the infinitive without to. And now a few examples. The first one, the government advised, we get vaccinated. And the final example for today, the physician advised, he get vaccinated. And to finish, we're going to do a mini quiz. I'm going to give you two sentences with two options and I encourage you to write the correct answers in the comments down below. The first one, I recommend that he A. Try or B. Tries acupuncture. Choose the correct option, A or B. And the second sentence, option A, I recommend you to come to Valencia or B, I advise you to come to Valencia. Please share your answers with me in the comments below. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video and I really hope that you found this English bit useful. I think it's a very confusing and tricky grammar point and I hope today's lesson will help you use these verbs correctly. And guys, if you want to learn one more tricky point, I suggest watching this lesson on the difference between neither and none. You can check it out right here. And guys, if you learned something new, please don't forget to like this lesson, to subscribe to English Bits, and remember that you can catch me on Instagram, where I teach English every day. Thank you for watching today's lesson and see you next Wednesday and next Sunday. Have a nice day. Ciao for now!